Hello everybody, my name is 7-Eleven, and welcome to week 14 of the Pokemon Battle Association Season 4. This week we are battling Colin, and so he has a really hyper-offensive team with the Weavile and the Victini and the Mega Dionce, and so I am bringing also a fairly offensive team with Volcanion and, um, and Lucario, and this week... I am bringing a, um, I'm bringing a, a really interesting sweeping Skarmory if I can try to pull that off with Sword Stance and uh, Brave Bird, Iron Head, and Roost. Hopefully that can work out for me. Um, this is actually a team that Bronson helped make because um, he really wanted to help out, and so I said, sure, let's let's just do this. So, let's jump into this battle now. Um, so, this is going to be actually the very last battle for me because week 15, Adam dropped out, so I have a forfeited win. Uh, so there is no week 15 battle, even though there is a week 15 in the league, but I do have that win secured. So, Colin leads off with Legally Blonde, the Weavile, and then switches. I have Golem. Thankfully, there is no fake out to break the sturdy, and so I get free rocks as he goes into Golem. Now, I'm confused as to what this Golem wants to do. Uh, I was thinking Drain Punch, but I guess Earthquake makes more sense because it's Stab and all that sort of stuff. So we trade Earthquakes here, and so it's Stab for both of us. I see that it's, that it's a 2-hit KO for both of us. I was going to go for the Sucker Punch, but I misplayed because I didn't realize that Custap Berry was going to pop anyway. And so that was a pretty bad blunder on my part. Um, so this Rotom Wash is going to go for the Will-O-Wisp as I just explode. I decided not to go for the Sucker Punch just in case Rotom goes for... You know, whatever. Will-O-Wisp, Thunder Wave, whatever. So, I I do blow up, and uh, we see that this is a bulky uh, Leftovers Rotom. And so, this is my opportunity to start setting up with Smeargle. Well, there are no rocks on my, on my side of the field, and I land the Spore. So, uh, Rotom gets put to sleep and is forced to switch out and so this is a baton passing smeargle and i'm going to be baton passing shell smash this week i have baton pass quiver dances i have baton pass gear shifts this week i am battle i am battling and i am baton passing shell smash so um here is this weavile in here and um, I can baton pass in a moment. So Ice Shard is going to take me down to my Focus Sash because I do have a decreased defense. And so I do go down to Focus Sash. Baton pass now. Uh, I was thinking Volcanion maybe. What, I was a little nervous about what the Empoleon was going to bring, so I decided to just bring in Lucario. And so Lucario's Bullet Punch is going to easily take out Weavile. And so Weavile has the power to knock out everything on, um, on Colin's team. So he sends in Victini, and I said, why Victini? I have Dark Pulse for that. So I go for the Dark Pulse, but this is... Darn Victini has the Culverberry. Hoping for flinch does not happen. And um, yeah, I do have Life Orb, but I didn't mention that. And he goes for V Create. And so with the weakened defense, stab V Create, super effective. Lucario had no chance of surviving there. Absolutely no chance of surviving. So down goes the Lucario. Even though I was supposed to sweep, had it not been for the Culverberry, that's what would have happened. So Snorlax is here to pursuit trap things, and 
uh, be able to sponge up hits. So this Victini actually goes for the rest. Uh, I am kind of happy that I see that this is not a scarfed Rotom. I'm sorry, not a scarfed um, Victini. Uh, so I see that Body Slam does a load of damage. And out goes the Victini as Pingu comes in. And I really should have pursued traps there, but I didn't. I was just clicking Body Slam for extra damage. But in this case, it does pay off because I do get the Body Slam Paralysis on the uh, Empoleon. So I decided to bring in Volcanion here just in case he was going to go for a Skull. But here comes the Stealth Rock. And so, at this point, I decide to start setting up. I go for a flame charge, and I see that that hardly does anything at all. While this this Emperor Penguin, Empoleon, has Earthquake, and that does way too much damage. Way too much damage. I was thinking, should I send in Skarmory or Snorlax? I decided to send in Skarmory. Here's the Earthquake doesn't do anything life is good um, so this is my other opportunity to start setting up and I go for swords dance now this Garmory as I said before has iron head and brave bird so I go for the brave I go for the swords dance and I see that scald does way too much damage as well so this Empoleon is really putting in a lot of work against my team. Especially now that the Stealth Rocks are up, Smeargle is going to die upon entry. So here's another Scald. I was thinking, should I bring in Snorlax or Volcanion? I did not want to risk that Earthquake prediction, so I just went straight into Snorlax. Although, in hindsight, um, bringing in Volcanion for that would be pretty nice. So in comes Victini, and he sacks Victini at this point, which is really great because um, Victini would probably be able to take out Skarmory anyway with B-Create. So that is one threat for Skarmory out of the way. Now in comes Primetime. Uh, when I saw Earthquake on Golem, I thought that this thing would be choice banded damage but um, as you can see that's a whole lot of damage I go for pursuit because it's super effective and what do you know he has another uh, Culverberry holder so uh, he got me there he definitely got me there so I'm forced to switch at this point and I think this would be the best time for me to sack off the Smeargle to the Stealth Rock damage um, and I did that just so that Volcanion can come in for free uh, I realize at this point that Volcanion does outspeed everybody on his team and so that is really awesome well I'm not sure if Rotom outspeeds or not um, but here is Steam Eruption and down goes Golurk so that is one big threat out of the way and now in comes Diancy, and you are for forced to Mega Evolve on the first turn. Um, I was thinking I'll just have Volcanion stay in and just pray that he does not have Protect. Just pray that he's a Calm Mindset and he doesn't have Protect. And that's exactly what it was. No Protect, no extra speed, Volcanion does outspeed, and Mega Diancy drops like the rock that she is so in comes Pingu and I really have to get a lot of damage I have to get a big hit on this thing fire blast misses and that earthquake is just going to obliterate Volcanion and so that was a major upset and probably would have probably lost me the battle so this next part is really really stally and um, I hate to play this game, but that's just what I have to resort to sometimes. So this is going to be a really long stall between Snorlax and Rotom. My Snorlax in this case 
is Impish with max HP, max defense, and 4 attack with Body Slam, Pursuit, Rest, and Sleep Talk. While this Rotom Wash is Bold, max HP, and mostly invest in defense with Thunder Wave, Will-O-Wisp, Volt Switch, and Pain Split. Volt Switch being Rotom's only offensive move. Uh, but because Snorlax has a massive amount of HP, Pain Split is really keeping this stall game prolonged. And so that is why this is a really, really long stall fest. I do have the rest sleep talk so I can keep hitting things. And Polion is in now. This is a relaxed, mixed, bulky Empoleon with max HP. Rocking Skull, Ice Beam, Earthquake, and Stealth Rock. Uh, I'm not quite sure what Ice Beam was for, but Earthquake was able to take out the uh, Volcanion that you saw before. Uh, and Scald is doing a load of damage to um, Skarmory. And so this is a really long stall here. I do have Skarmory in, and I said to myself, well, all that Skarmory needs to do, all that Skarmory needs to do is to take out this penguin and then sacrifice it to Rotom and then Snorlax can hopefully outstall the Rotom all the way down to the timer. Uh, so I miscalculated there. I was hoping for another pair of hacks. Didn't happen and Skarmory was unable to take out the Empoleon. But my plan really would have worked if Skarmory was able to take out the Empoleon, then Snorlax could just stall out the rest of the game from there on. And there was an, a big mistake that I missed back there. I should have Pursuit trapped the Empoleon. That would have killed the Empoleon, and I would have won. But the rest of this game is just going to be an extra long stall fest between Snorlax and Rotom uh, with the sets that I mentioned before. Thunder Wave, Will-O-Wisp, Bolt Switch, and Pain Split for the Rotom Wash. Body Slam, Pursuit, Rest, and Sleep Talk for the Snorlax. The problem is that I really should have Pursuit trapped. That would have that would have taken out the Empoleon for sure. And it would be a one-to-one -one battle. The tie would come down to who has the most HP. And Snorlax would win even with a third of its health left. So that is really the, al the entire outcome of this battle, guys. Um, yeah, so I did lose two-to-one. Uh, there were two really important factors in this um, in this battle. Uh, the, the bigger one, the one that is to chance, is that I missed a Fire Blast from Volcanion onto the Empoleon. That 100% lost me the game. And I did have the chance to take it back uh, had I pursued Trap the Empoleon, but I just decided to go for Body Slam. Timer ran out, by the way. Uh, this did go to timer, and I lost 2 nothing. I'm sorry, 2-1 against Colin. So that is my last battle. Adam dropped out, and so what does that mean? That means that there is a reserved spot for the Pittsburgh Thunderbolts in the playoffs. So if you guys are hyped for that, then make sure to like this video, comment on this video, share it with your friends, click subscribe if you haven't already, and you guys get to see some more playoff videos coming your way, and I'm really excited for that, and the competition is only going to get more and more fierce, but we've proven ourselves, and hopefully we can uh, bounce back from some mid-season blunders and let's let's get the show on the road thank you guys so much for watching and i'll see you guys later peace